That's right. from John's Grill on Berry Street in Fort Worth. Welcome to the Players Club with hosts Emma Holquist and Olivia Lee and featuring TCU student athletes. Brought to you by John's Grill Online at johnsgrill.com and by Fans Vintage, the Frog Fam's number one source for rare and vintage TCU gear. Now, here are Emma and Olivia. Welcome back into another episode of the Players Club, live from John's Grill. I'm Olivia Lee. And I'm Emma Holquist. And we are super excited to be back with you for another Thursday evening, talking to two TCU athletes about their lives, both in and outside their sport. Is That's that right, right. We are happy to be joined by our two members of our nationally ranked TCU football team, Woo. Jack Besh and Jalen Robinson. Thanks for coming on, you guys. Yay. Thank y'all for having us. Yeah. Happy to have you here. This is like one of your guys' first media appearances with TCU. Right. Too, yeah. Big deal. We're yeah. happy to have you on our show, talking to you, learning all about you as we prepare for the upcoming football season. Lots of pressure on this TCU football team, and we're happy you guys can kind of help us out and lead us into the new season next year. Now, your fresh year on campus, Jalen, you're a Fort Worth local, correct? Correct. Okay, so you're born here, so you're back in your hometown, and transferred from Old Miss, that's the last school you played at, and Jack, you transferred from LSU, yeah? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about your previous experience at those two schools. Dylan, I can start with you. You came from Ole Miss. Now you're back in your hometown. What has that been like for you, being home here in Fort Worth? You no, know, um, just being back home and our family, friends, and the opportunity to play for a school. But uh, I went to school to pass school right up the street, so just coming right. back home. And my dad also went to TCU, so just coming back home. Uh -huh. Life my, my city. Yeah, that's so special. I didn't uh, know your dad went to TCU. I actually live on the street at Pascal High School. I literally live on that street. I drive yeah. there every single day. So I love it. And what about you, Jack? What's your experience been like Jack, so far coming from LSU? Are you a Jack? Like, are you? What's your full name? Are you a Jackson? Uh, no, nah, I'm actually a John. You're a John. John. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyways, continue. So how did, yeah. we, how did you get Jack then? Is that a normal nickname for yeah. John? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. I'm pretty sure it is. So you just liked the nickname and stuck with it? No, nah, my my great uncle. His name was John, or his name was Jack, and he like pitched uh, against like Babe Ruth and stuff. Yeah. And, like, Ooh. Like my brother, his nickname is Tiger, but his real name is Martin. 
So I guess we just have the nickname for no reason in our family. Wow. Yeah. Wait, so, so, your, so your nickname came from your great uncle who was awesome. awesome. And, against Big Root. And my brother's nickname came whenever he was growing up. My uncle was playing at LSU. So oh, wow. he's the LSU Tiger. So that's why he got the nickname Tiger. That's cool. That is so Tiger. awesome. I is, love that. Is that a younger brother or older? It's not older. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So, what, Jack? What has your experience been like so far, coming from LSU and now landing here in Fort Worth? How's it been? You know, it's been awesome. Um, it's obviously like a lot different, like the size. Like it's more like individualized over here. You know, there's more focus on like, um, like on you, like you know, in academics, um, on the field, off the field, really in everything you do, um, which has been cool. And obviously, Fort Worth, like there's a little bit more to do. Um, you know, like we're in a pretty big metropolitan being near Dallas yeah. and all that. And like, it's good to be able to connect with different people, like, you know, that have come here, that have been around here, um, not only for now, but for the future. Yeah, no, That's for cool. sure. It's like a hub for, yeah. and sports too. There's been a lot of sports teams around here. Would you say it's the same for you coming from Ole Miss, similar experience or? Yeah. I mean, every, everywhere is different. Yeah. I'm proud now, so I'm loving it. I'm loving here. Yeah, you're all about this, yeah. right? I love, I love hearing that. And what, do you, what would you guys say is the most difficult part of transferring from a school, coming somewhere new? What's the hardest adjustment you have to make? Even not as just an athlete, but like as a person. For me, I would say just, um, I mean, connect, just connecting with the, the new teammates. Yeah. Not bonding with the teammates. You know, you gotta make sure you're. Um, you, you're obviously coming in and you have people, you know, the jobs are already, or you're, you know you have to comp- come to compete for a job. So yeah. just knowing that you have to be friends with someone you're competing against. Don't want to step on anyone's toes, exactly. right? That makes has sense. Has it been welcoming, like the team? Very. Yeah, oh, that's sure. good. Hey. What do you think has been the most, like, welcoming and, like, nice? Player or coach? Or both, yeah. Uh, like, what about that? There's, that there's a nice? lot. Well, yeah. I'm from... So I played seven on seven with Bud. He's from oh, okay. Louisiana. Oh, so cool. I, already know, I already knew Bud before I came here. Did you talk to Bud like when you were transferring? You reached out to him. You're like, hey, should I come to see you? Um, no, because whenever that was happening, they were like in the national championship, and I was they were trying busy. to follow. They were a little busy. Yeah. They were a little yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 I had a question for you guys regarding did that. I, should I ask this? Question? Yeah, no, ask. Go for it. Okay, if you guys were on the team when you were playing the national championship, don't know if assuming, you watched it. Don't know if you watched that game. Yeah. Don't know if you saw how it went. What would you have done if you were there? Like, what you mean by that? <laughs> As a player, what would like you I have would done think, differently? Yeah. What would you have contributed to that game? My whole thing about what happened was you go look back, every team, you know, gets beat before they win it. Yeah. So, like, you kind of, like, getting there and winning it is, like, two, you know, very big, like, like accomplishments. Yeah, like it's yeah. two like very different things. Uh-huh. If you go back, like you know, like every big program going from Ohio State, Bama, LSU, Georgia, mm-hmm. they've all you know they've all had a loss like that in, in the national championship. But the years to come, they uh, they grow from it, they learn from it, and then they mm-hmm. kind of elevate from that. Um, and so, like I guess to answer that question, I guess it's more like now in the present. Yeah. Um, you know, like with Coach Cos and everybody, yeah. everybody like conforming and becoming one and like working together, they kind of have that recipe now only to get there. But now, like the little nuances they need to fix to be able to get us there and, and, and bring the big trophy back yeah. home. Yeah. Wow. That's so it. I think it was like needed. Yeah. That's very well said. I, don't, I don't know needed. Very well like, said. I don't know if it was needed, but like it definitely happens to every. Like it, it does happen. Yeah. It's something you have to go through yeah. as a team, and sure. it builds you up. Now you're more the team as a whole is more hungry to go back and repeat yeah. and have a different outcome, right? For sure. I just thought of kind of a question for both of you guys, and Jalen, you can start if you want. What was your very first impression when you walked into the first day of spring practice? That was really the first time you're with the whole team practicing together. What was, like, your first thought? Were you nervous, or were you just kind of like, let's do this thing? It's always let's do this thing. But for me, watching is just how the approach. Yeah. I think cause his effect on the team and the way to approach and attack everything you're doing, it kind of shocking. I haven't been around a program that does everything to perfection or tries I to perfection. Yeah, you, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's something I'm still in shock about. Cause is cause the dude. Yeah, we hear so much about yeah, Coach Cause from yeah. yeah all of the football players. That's that's such a good impact that he has too. And for you guys being new new guys on the team and walking in and immediately having that feeling. It's like amazing that our our program has that now that asset with us. Mm-hmm. I love I love that. What was like your transfer process? Like when did you guys enter the portal? I I entered the portal a couple of days after we played Georgia in the SC Championship game. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. And were you like TCU bound from the beginning or were you kind of looking around, deciding where you're going to be? How to, what does that look like? Because I feel like people more talk about the recruiting process and how you get recruited and less about the transfer process. It's still a recruiting process when you're transferring. You're yeah. doing the same things, but in a shorter time frame, right? Yeah. So what did that look like for you? For me, it was like the difference between like high school and this it was way more like business related. Yeah. I wasn't there to go visit places and to take pictures and jerseys. Yeah. And, but I was there to talk to the coaches, get the vibe, and and then get back, you know, get back on the road to make yeah. a decision. Um, and once I like, I knew I wanted to come here, but once I got on campus, I saw the place. You know, I saw Kaz, I saw Coach Dykes, Coach Meach, and, and all of them. That's when I kind of fell in love with the place and knew I wanted to be here. Yeah, I love that. And Jalen, you've, you've been around a few different places, right? Kind of dipping your toes, trying to figure out where you want to be. Do you feel like now that you're at TCU where your dad's played, you went to Pascal High School, like you're a local here, is, do you have that feeling of like, this is where I'm supposed to be? I do. Um, yeah. I actually was supposed to be here last year. Um, yeah. It was out of TCU wholeness. Um, yeah. Obviously, I made a decision and I had to stick with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, uh, I had to, I had to come back. Um, yeah. I'm excited to be here. Um, I feel more comfortable. I feel like my trainers out here. I have a lot of resources out here. Yeah. Which is, it's just good to be back home. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I can't imagine the feeling too of being able to play your last few years of college football and being in your hometown. That's the best experience. Now, what would you guys say is the biggest difference between your previous school, like the place that you actually played in, and Texas? Like, was there any culture shock coming to Texas, or is it pretty similar to Louisiana and Ole Miss, like the towns that you're in? That's a good question for Jack. Um, Baton Rouge was like eat, breathe, sleep football. Yeah. Like, like I said, there wasn't much to do except for like football and like I said like this is a much bigger metropolitan like there's much more things to do businesses to like interact with people yeah. to meet um so I would say and like the big like how big it is like yeah. you know like I went from a school with 32,000 like approximately give or take people to what like 10, 12, 10, 10, 10, 10, 12, 10, 10 people. Well, yeah so like like the size of it is also but like I think it's like like I was saying earlier it's a good thing because you get more individualized and like it's more insane. attention just on you well even I mean that goes across to your classes and stuff too like class. you guys will start to realize the longer that you're here your professors pay more attention to you and you know more people like I can walk around on campus and see five people that I know every day which is sometimes a good thing sometimes a bad thing but you definitely run into people a lot and like get to know your community better at a smaller school which yeah. is nice for sure I think the classes is the biggest difference because I was at SEC before I was at Arkansas and transferred here to a big school is so much different it's so much harder here do you guys feel like it may ramp up a little in the communications once you get into your later years and you may be saying something different yeah. if we have you on the show two years from now we'll see <laughs> we'll see what you think about that but what got you into criminal justice why why did you want to study that here for me um i'm a big criminal minds dude um okay. i actually have cool. a uh, communications i have a communications degree okay um, but um i wanted to try this out a little bit yeah um, i want to kiss you because Cool. I've taken I, some criminal justice classes. I have They're too. so interesting. Yeah. yeah, they're interesting and good professors here too. And yeah. I've actually had a lot of football guys in my class for criminal justice, and they seem like they really enjoy it too. Like yeah. it's fun. But I made a 105 out of 105 in my criminal justice test today. Ooh! Class for Jack. Jack. Class for Jack. That's huge. You know what? We don't celebrate. We don't celebrate the academic victories. But that's good. Yeah, that's good. we should. That's I think. Huge. I think on that academic victory, we're gonna head to a quick commercial break. But when we return, we'll hear more from Jalen and Jack from TC Football. Stay tuned, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay Dixon, the proud owner and founder of Fans Vintage. We sell rare and vintage gear for all things TCU. I graduated from TCU with an MBA in 2020 and actually started Fans Vintage as part of a class project during COVID. And now, two years later, we've grown from selling random vintage gear on Instagram 
into a full-time retail business with rare and custom gear you can't find anywhere else. This business has always been about creating a community of passionate fans and bringing people together where nostalgia and school pride collide. We couldn't have gotten here without your tremendous enthusiasm and support. So thank you and we can't wait to share what's next. Stay tuned and as always, go Frogs. Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. This is Cowtown Headache Center, a neurology clinic that specializes in headache medicine. We offer standard oral medications, we offer trigger point injections, we offer multiple nerve blocks, we offer infusions both for prevention medication and for acute relief. My name is Andrew Levere. I'm a physician assistant that has a special certification from the National Headache Foundation in headache medicine. Patients are pretty shocked when I tell them we have tons of options for them and that we can do better than what they're doing. Uh, I don't just tell you, here's one medicine we're gonna try, I'll give them options. And then ultimately, we choose together as a provider and patient. It's very satisfying to know that we're changing people's lives. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best tasting, sugar-free kids drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Players Club live here from John's Grill. I'm Olivia Lee, joined at this table by two of TCU football's newest transfers, Jalen Robinson and Jack Besh, along with my co-host Emma Hillquist. We're breaking everything down here for you guys. Just want to give a quick shout out to Fans Vintage, your number one spot for all your rare and vintage yeah, TCU nice. gear. You can make sure to check that's them out nice. online at fansvintagegear.com or on Ans Instagram and Twitter at Fans Vintage Gear. They've got lots of good stuff with the football season approaching you definitely want to check them out for all of their clothing now you guys we've kind of been breaking down your experience with transferring and coming to a new place choosing tcu emma did you have something you wanted maybe to start it off with what do you think is like the most surprising part about tcu like stepping on campus i mean jalen obviously like, you've probably seen campus before living so close but like yeah what do you think like shocked you the most was there anything it's kind of small. Like, yeah, like, like I was saying, like how small the, the, like the campus. I could walk across the campus in ten minutes, and the LSU, I could get caught walking like twenty-five. Yeah. So hmm. describe it, because I've never been to LSU. I've never been to Ole Miss. Tiger on on campus, right? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All the time, like a zoo yeah. scenario. They have a they have a bear at Baylor too. But. So was it like? Is it LSU more of like a commuter school? Like, is there a lot of people like commuting to and from their homes? Like, is it really busy in that aspect? Or is oh, everyone yeah. like living on campus? Uh, nah, nah, nobody really lives on campus. Really? Okay. The That's... traffic is horrible on campus. Like, horrible. <laughs> really? I mean, you get caught in the morning in like 30, 45 minutes of traffic. You okay, so traffic. any traffic around here, you feel like you're chilling. There is no traffic around here. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Because <laughs> you also, do you guys walk to classes? Oh, no, you drive. Online, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay. I drive to all my classes. You drive? Where are you guys? Li are you guys living close by to here to campus? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, by right here. Oh, perfect. Yeah, Nova Street. And so, what time are you guys having to get to the facility in the morning right now for spring practice? Is it like five? Six fifteen Monday through okay. Saturday. Okay. Okay. That's early. Yeah. Yeah, sure. that is early. Are you guys morning, like, that's early risers, early. morning I, people? I wanna, if that's not early, I don't want to find out where. Yeah. Really? No, I mean, it is, for sure. <laughs> I, I could not be waking up that early, but I was curious, because I feel like when you're an athlete, you just kind of, you're used to the grind of, like, having to wake up yeah. in the morning practice, right? Yep. But if, on a on a regular day, if you didn't have to go to practice, you would all choose to sleep in. 
you know, I'm still like, up. Oh, really? It's kind of oh. hard to sleep. Yeah, especially now, like our body. You're like, used to yeah, it. I'm not trying to sleep. Yeah, try to sleep, and your body wakes you up like 8 a.m. Yeah, that, Sunday. that makes sense. You're like, oh, I'm trying to get like two more hours today. That's brutal. Yeah. yeah. Now, I had a question for you, Jack. I always hear about the different foods in Louisiana. The gumbo, like those oh, type yeah. of thing. Can you tell me about what food are you missing most from Louisiana right now? Being all my grandma's food. Really? Is yeah. she the is she the chef of the family? I have a mama. Yeah. What yeah. do they make? What's your favorite dish that they make? Anything with crawfish in it. I was about to say it's crawfish season. Yeah. A lot of things, really anything crawfish or shrimp. Mm-hmm. Um, like shrimp stew with boiled eggs, chicken and dumplings, crawfish etouffee. Um, wow. Like, yeah. I have I never had a bread. single one of those things. Gumbo. Yeah. Gumbo is like my favorite. I've never had crawfish. Me neither. I, I, is that something that I gravitate like, towards? Because yeah. you never tried it. Yeah. I, well, I have it and I haven't had it from Louisiana, so I'm sure Jack, I was there. Jack, what do you think of Popeye's? Oh, it's... Popeyes is like the best fast food restaurant. I agree. Okay. Actually, we, I actually really agree with that. We asked Bud Clark that, and I think he, he loved it. Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. all about it. Popeyes is like, to me, really good. But he said it wasn't like a true representation of like Louisiana food. Southern food. Nah, because fried chicken isn't really like. It's not very Louisiana. But like, what about really red beans and rice? Red beans and rice are fire. It's so good. I so love Popeyes. See, now I need to like start yeah. writing a list of all of these things that I need to try from Louisiana. Have, We've had two guests from Louisiana. Now I gotta actually it. give it a go. Beignets. Oh yeah, I've had beignets. I've from never Disneyland. had beignets. <laughs> I've had them from Disneyland, but I don't think that counts. I've never had like a legitimate beignet. Beignets are fire. What we're so saying, Jack, is donuts. you need to you need to take time to cook for me and Emma and make all of these foods so we can taste test them. Yo, I mean, no, I'm the I'm the best chef. Okay, good. That's good in to know. The in the DFW. Okay, good to know. <laughs> now, Jalen, you're obviously closer to your home now, right? Jack's father, you're closer. Are you going home every weekend for home cooked meals? Like, is that all you're doing these days now? This would be crazy to hear, but I'm not. Really? I, I try to stay away. Okay. I'm trying to focus on my child. I go back home sometimes. But yeah, that not makes as sense. much as you think I would. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, I wanted to ask you because Texas football is like a whole different breed in itself. I feel like we're always talking about, too, the recruits that come out of here, a lot of strong yeah. players. What was your experience like getting recruited out of high school to play college football yeah. here in Texas? Um, it was a it was a good experience. Um, Texas is a very, very competitive state to play football in. Yeah. Um, and just being around people that play football, when we get offered, it's like we have a national championship around yeah. So get as many offers as you can in the state of Texas is a big thing as well. For sure. Um, I'm going to speak back on just a little thing. Um, TC didn't offer me out of high school. Really? Yeah, that was, I, was, I was upset about that. <laughs> I can tell. It's all the world. Me and Coach had our argues. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, but now you ended up here, right? So it must, yeah. it must have been meant to be down the line. It was. You, you, you got here eventually. Mm-hmm. I love that. Now, Jack, your experience so far, you said smaller school. You've kind of adjusted to that. Um, is there... Do you guys feel like there's any different? TC is very prideful, right? We like we love our Horn Frogs, we love our sports. We had a bas- great basketball season, tennis, all these different sports that are doing well at TCU. Could you guys kind of feel that energy when you got here of like we're really celebrating our athletics right now? Because I feel like that's an energy that like as students even we can kind of feel on campus on a daily basis. Could you guys tell when you got here? Sure. Yeah, definitely. All I know is we're gonna keep it up. Like, yeah. like I said, we're gonna have a so. I love yeah. that. That was one of my follow up questions because I mean, TCU football just had obviously our a legendary season. We had such a great run, regardless. We're gonna have two back to back, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, do you guys feel when you when you're like starting spring practice and in the locker room, do you feel any sort of pressure coming in as the new guys? I mean, there's a lot of transfers. Is there like that sort of energy in the locker room or not really? Brothers, bro, we've been doing that yeah, for the past yeah, seven, seven years old. At the end of the day, we're still running around and catching footballs. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, just like, I it's like that. I like that football. Yeah. yeah, I just think that I, I was I asked the question because I do see that how that could be intimidating, kind of walking into that locker room, coming off such a great season, but then with all of these new athletes like you guys coming in and adding to the program, it's really only making it stronger, right? Yeah, so that's exactly. that's got to be motivating. Now, can you guys walk me through a day of spring practice from start to finish? What does that look like? Throwing it, throwing in classes in there, might I add, because you guys are so busy, and I feel like everyone likes to know, like you wake up at this time, you do this, like what does it look like? 
Give me a rundown. Yeah, so I have my alarm set for 5.15 a.m. Um, get to the right. city around like 6, 6.05, eat breakfast. Um, we practice Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. So, and then we lift on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, like, the days we have practice, we have meetings at 6.45, and the days we lift, we start lifting at 7. So, if we have practice, you get ready for meetings, you go to meetings from 6.45 to, like, 8, and then you get on the field by about 8.10, practice from, like, 8.10 to 10.30 to 45. Um, and then we're a receiver, so we get on the jug machine, get some extra mm-hmm. catches in, put some extra work in. And from there, hit the training room for a little bit, then eat lunch, and then go to class the rest of the day, really. It's nice that football's in the morning, because yeah, you, you get to kind of focus on, uh, like, academics and just, like, being you and, and doing what you like to do, like, outside of football. Yeah. I mean, I think that's crazy, too, because I'll see, like, some of the football guys on campus walking around at, like, 12. Little do we know that you guys have had a full <laughs> day. day. Yeah, you've done everything. That's just crazy. Man, I always joke about that, like, we get done with practice and get all our extra catches in and or a bit. I go to call my friend and they don't answer. I'm like, why aren't they answering? Not they're sleep, I'm like, sleep. I'm like, they're still sleeping. We just had like, yeah, we just did more than they're gonna do the, the entire whole day. day. That's crazy. That's, I mean, that's, that's the student athlete experience. Yeah, that's and serious. you gotta feel accomplished after doing that, right? There's days where I'm like, I didn't get anything done today. You're like guaranteed you're getting at least, yeah, yeah, you're like, you're, you're getting like you're four or five it. things done on your day. Yeah. What would you guys say is uh, the harder day, like on your bodies, like physically, the days in the weight room or the practice days? Practice for sure. Practice, for practice. Sure. Yeah. Even when it's like an intense weightlifting day, it's not not the same. It's not the same. The heat mixtures, the sweat, the, the tiredness, the repetition. Yeah. It, it's a lot. And because it's also like practice, not only is it physical, but it's mental. Yeah. Not only are you physically tired, but like you get mentally drained. A lot of thinking. Yeah. That's true. That's interesting. I had a question about uh, the weight room. Maybe, Emma, you also can add into this because I don't know what your guys' weight room experience is like as a swim team. Do you guys like. Are you playing music? I know you're playing music in there. Is like someone on Ox, or do you guys have like yeah. a playlist that you play every single time you're in the weight room? Yeah, playlist, right? It moves around. Like some days it's rap, and some days it's like hard metal. Is a is a coach in charge of that, or is a oh, okay? It's all the coaches. Exactly. So, you you I wish I was in charge. Input? Who's in charge? I wish I was in charge. Oh, you wish you were. Oh no, straight young boy. <laughs> straight young boy. Is he your favorite Yeah, for sure. I, and that's what I was gonna say. Louisiana produces not only the best athletes, but also oh my the, best, gosh. the best singers, the Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne. Um, you have Young Boy, uh, Do you agree with this statement, Jalen? <laughs> my favorite rap is in there, so I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, comment. no comment. No comment. No comment. Maybe you guys should suggest like starting a Google Doc where you can submit a uh, song request. Or make a or playlist, something. yeah. Yeah. Anybody yeah. football doesn't have a playlist. I usually do. They usually pick oh. the clean version. Oh, but honestly, yeah. I feel like every time football's in there, it's Young Boy. Uh, I practice. Is fair. Uh, yeah. practice. Like, like last I, year. I help make the playlist for practice. Okay. But, oh. wait, um, so, like, in the indoor, they're playing music? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Um, we warm up to music. Yeah. You warm up to music. We warm up to music. Okay, so you have some musical taste then, is what you're saying. If you're doing some of the music, yeah. you, you got that. Oh, you just be taking the for that. How did you get that role? If you're the new guy on the street, how did you get the music role? I don't I just. They trust because you. I, because I know <laughs> I, maybe a couple of you, but <laughs> because I told them we needed, you know, some music to like, because they're not ever playing hard rock that's just playing in the background it's just like whenever yeah. like that young boy comes on or Kevin Gates that's or it. you know little baby everybody starts to go there you fire. go I'm getting into it yeah you so need a vibe so I gotta kind of mix that in a little bit more there you go we love yeah. that energy um, um, I have a, a different question to ask do you guys play any other sports growing up well, all of them everything did you swim no no I guess the back line Jack said oh yeah the show, you the gotta swim everywhere yeah no, I'm just messing. You said that swim was difficult, though, didn't you? When you said you yeah, had to train a bit a little bit? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Have you ever swam a little bit for your training? I have not. No? So what other sport? I workout, bro. What other sport? Track, basketball, track. soccer, baseball. Okay. Wow. Basically every other sport. Yeah. Besides oh, swimming? I know. Every time I'm like, what you guys play growing up? They're like, everything. I'm like, everything. Yeah. What was y'all's favorite besides football? Like, did you have one yeah. that you really enjoyed playing? Low, you young? low key soccer, but really basketball. That okay. makes sense. Besides baseball? Baseball? Okay. Which were you sure. best at, aside from football? Track. Track? I didn't like practice. Okay. 
Oh. But you were probably like one of the best ones on the team. That was fast. Yeah, I can see. I can, that can make sense I mean, yeah. for your current position in football. Makes sense for sure. Now, I have a, I kind of have a question moving away, like back towards football. What would you guys say is the most difficult part of playing D1 football? Aside from like the obvious answer, which is just like the grind of it all, of the workouts and everything. What would you say is like specifically the most difficult part of playing D1 football and a D1 sport if you want to chip in? Be like, I would, well, I would just say like time management because right. of everything. But if you get good at it, then it becomes like I'm not gonna say easy because it's not easy. Yeah. But, like you know, some people like you know like aren't that well with just like managing the time they do have. Uh-huh. Um, but if you do manage it well, then like I feel like everything definitely like falls in place. It just makes it just a little bit easier, and like you know like don't go to sleep at one a.m. to wake up at five. You know, like, yeah. Get your stuff done. Like, if you have study hall, like, you work on a study hall so you can go home and be you and then go to sleep at a decent time and yeah. be, like, you know, like, rejuvenated and energized for the day to come. Do you guys have required study hall hours? We do. Yeah. Some do. Some do. Okay. New transfers do, and I think freshmen. But yeah. if you show them that you can, you know, like, do stuff on your own, um, like, academically, then yeah. they kind of let you free after a couple of months. Yeah. I mean, you grow up real quick, too, playing D1 football. You're As a freshman, you're thrown in wherever school you're at, and you have such a grind that you have to follow. I mean, you can't fall behind. There's no room to. Like, right. the study hours, you have to study. You have to be at practice. You have to do all those things. So it, it, it makes you grow up real fast, right, playing a D1 sport. Well, We've loved talking to these two. We're going to talk to them a little bit more, but head to a quick commercial break. When we return, we'll hear more from these two TCU football guys. Stay tuned, everyone. T-Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying T-Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying T-Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event-based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying T Club or online at flyingtclub.com. Texas based Happy Water offers the best tasting sugar free kids drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase happy water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay Dixon, the proud owner and founder of Fans Vintage. We sell rare and vintage gear for all things TCU. I graduated from TCU with an MBA in 2020 and actually started Fans Vintage as part of a class project during COVID. And now, two years later, we've grown from selling random vintage gear on Instagram into a full-time retail business with rare and custom gear you can't find anywhere else. This business has always been about creating a community of passionate fans and bringing people together where nostalgia and school pride collide. We couldn't have gotten here without your tremendous enthusiasm and support. So thank you, and we can't wait to share what's next. Stay tuned, and as always, go Frogs. This is Cowtown Headache Center, a neurology clinic that specializes in headache medicine. We offer standard oral medications, we offer trigger point injections, we offer multiple nerve blocks, we offer infusions both for prevention medication and for acute relief. My name is Andrew LeVere. I'm a physician assistant that has a special certification from the National Headache Foundation in headache medicine. Patients are pretty shocked when I tell them we have tons of options for them and that we can do better than what they're doing. Uh, I don't just tell you, here's one medicine we're gonna try. I'll give them options and then ultimately, we choose together as a provider and patient. It's very satisfying to know that we're changing people's lives. Hello, everyone. 
everyone, and welcome back to the Players Club, live from John's Grill. I'm Olivia Lee, alongside my co-host, Emma Hillquist, and two of TCU football's newest recruits, Jalen Robinson and Jack Besh. Thanks for coming on here, guys. And just want to give a quick shout out to John's Grill, a fast, casual service in a fun, relaxed, family-friendly environment featuring 11 big screen TVs for you to catch the big game on. The Mixology team has created a craft cocktail and beer menu featuring local spirits and brews from across Texas. You can check them out at johnsgrill.com or on Instagram at johnsgrill. We love John's Grill. We're here every Thursday with our the biggest fan. We always get our french fries. They're fire, so everyone try them. All right, guys, we want to switch gears and focus more on who you are outside of football because that's very important and it's what we try to focus on in this show. Is there something that you guys have kind of found out so far? I know you haven't been here for that long, but found out either in the community or at TCU that you kind of want to get involved in or looking to get involved in? They're like, no idea. I'm focused on, yeah. <laughs> I'm focused on football. And that's why I told you I was kind of busy. I came here to play football and do school yeah. and – that's about it. Yeah. I haven't really thought yet. You haven't really thought about it yet? Yeah, yeah I'm, I will get there. Like, man, we'll, we'll get to something right. like, I was like, something like, that, we, that I did at LSU a lot, like, help the community, like, charities and stuff like that. So, like, that's something I'm going to find. But, like, hobby-wise, it's just kind of like, do football, do school, and then, yeah. you know, like, just kind of show up the house. I have a dog, so I'll be with him and oh. do something with him. You have a dog, you said? Yeah. What kind of dog? Uh, an American bully. Ooh, an American what? A uh, bully. bully. Uh, oh, What's okay. its name? Uh, uh, Zion, but I just call him Z. Z, uh, that's cute. Yeah. Do you like animals? I do have a Frenchie. A Frenchie? Oh, really? His name so is Stitch. Emma, Emma likes that. Emma that's so cute. That's, that's cute. I have a dog, too. Its name is Dallas. Good name. It's not, it's not actually my dog. It's my roommate's dog. We foster her, but she's a sweetie. She's a German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. oh, so we're all, we're all about the dogs. So is there anything at LSU, you mentioned like you enjoy doing community service and stuff. Is there anything you guys did at your past schools that you were like really passionate about or kind of interested in in terms of like community service? Yeah, um, I had a, a few football camps that I hosted with my cool. former running back, Isaiah Bowser. Yeah. Um, I like being around kids, and I like to, I want to be a coach as well. My daughter, so just being around kids, being able to give my influence and yeah, show them like teach them, teach them things that to help them improve their game. I'm always able to give. And I'm sure, and I'm sure they love you, right? You're like a college athlete. They're like you're <laughs> so on. Cool. Yeah, 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 it makes you feel good, right? It does. What about you, Jack? Anything? Um, there was a charity that was in Baton Rouge called uh, Dreams Come True. There was like you know, like kids, like they give like. A wish if they have like terminal disease yeah. or cancer, and like uh -huh. it's like the one wish they go to like Disney World or meet yeah. LeBron or just something like that. Yeah, it was something like that um, that I was involved in. Like uh, mm -hmm. actually, one of the kids I worked with, literally on Monday, uh, finally became cancer free. Oh no! Wow. That is was last week chemo and stuff wow. like that. So I still try to stay connected to the couple of kids that um, that like I was around and yeah. be with. Good for um, you. So that's something that that's, that's, awesome. that's awesome. And that you can stay connected with them still when you're here now yeah. and you're all about them. I mean, I'm sure you guys are making such a difference in these kids' lives. Yeah. You have no idea so how much they're going to, like, idolize you. Yeah. And then being able to watch you play football in a school is pretty cool, too. So Do you guys that. think that you guys are going to utilize NIL here? Like any deals that you want to make? For sure. And, uh, oh, yeah, 100%. It's a flash to up there. Um, I don't know if y'all know. People call me J Flash Flash. It's oh, they name. do? Yeah. Okay, Flash. Y'all find out soon. Okay, so, there we go. It's a store by, what is it? What's the name of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's store, yeah. yeah. Flash store, get at me. Oh, oh hug himself. Yes. I love that. You should just go over there and walk in. Just and you can do right there. You know what I'm saying? I love that. No, but seriously, is that something you guys are talking about a lot? Kind of as you as you're yeah, making yeah, a decision to go to another school. Or? At first, you know, you would think that it's all about the now that NIL is such a big thing. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. Yeah. But I would say from my experience, you need to go somewhere where you you wanna. If your dream is to go to the NFL, you need to go somewhere where NFL is first and football is first, and then NIL is second. Um, yeah. So as of now, right now, I'm focused. NIL comes second. Yep. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm waiting for the bigger prize. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that's like the best way to look at it, right? Yeah, the whole thing about it, too, is like, let's just say, like, you get blessed with NIL and you're making, let's just, let's high, let's highball it, like, yeah. say 50000 a month, which is a lot of money, right? Yeah. 50000 doesn't compare to waking up after draft day with 14 M's in your account. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's fun money. That's and, like, that's fun money, and then 
the number of people that fell was life. Just life changing. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's very true. <laughs> but yeah, one of the questions that I had to you on here that kind of ties in for this, like when you step on to a college campus, because it's almost like a, a four year boot camp or however many years you're here, four year boot camp of getting you ready for the next level, which is the NFL. Do you, are you guys discussing that a lot about your future in football while you're still trying to stay in your college like sport and experience that? Would you say? For sure, that's well, that's my biggest motivation. You know, yeah, is to make it like like everything is just like go another step, another step. It's like from high school, you dream about playing college ball. Whenever you're in college ball, you dream about making the NFL, which is like, I guess for most kids, the ultimate goal. Yeah. But you know, like, so like definitely like that's something that I would say motivates probably every college football player. Yeah. I mean. Why do all this for no reason? Exactly. Totally. I. It's interesting, too, because I feel like in any profession that you're in, you almost, like, always want what you don't have yet. Like, you're always looking towards the next sure. thing. But you also are looking at it as, like, this is my motivation. Like, I did high school football. I grinded in high school to get to college. Now I'm grinding in college to get to the NFL. And then sure. once you're in the NFL, you can be like, okay, maybe I'll, like, relax for a day or two once I've, like, played for a few years, you know? Yeah. So that's a, an interesting perspective, but a good one to have for sure. Yeah. Now, something I I kind of wanted to pivot towards we've asked a bunch of different athletes that have come on the show everyone has different travel schedules you're going to different towns states cities experiencing different places do you guys enjoy the travel that you have to do during a season every weekend or every week every other week basically or is that kind of tough for you well it's the plan if you have a, a few home games and you have the right game here and there of course but if you if you have more away games and home games i, I hate it Really? Yeah. yeah. Depending on what we're playing as well, too. Like some of our um, like stadiums are exciting. Um, I played at uh, LSU yeah. um, this past year. Probably one of the best stadiums I've ever played in. So, so you guys, yeah, have, you guys, played, each other. Yeah, you guys yeah. have played each other, but that's you've so cool. never played against TCU or have either of you? I have not. Uh, so yeah. that's it. That's, that's interesting. So cool. that you guys I guess have we did not put that together. Yeah, yeah, that's, cool, that's yeah. a fun dynamic to have, though, right? Yeah. There, is there a lot of people on the TCU team now that either of you have played with previously in high school or at a different school, or no? Mar- Marcel was at LSU, but yeah. I didn't. I didn't you know. didn't play with him. Well, I, yeah, like I would didn't play with him. I mean, Okay. I was curious if, like, there's kind of a group of people that like you may have yeah. known from previously, or you, since you're from Fort Worth. Yeah, I don't know, so we, I, I didn't play on the scene, but we played people together. I played against them a few times. Okay, cool. And speaking of travel, you mentioned you played at LSU. That was a cool experience. Is there one place you can pinpoint that you've traveled to where you're like, that was the best place I've ever played at in terms of, like, the energy of the fans and the stadium and just the whole atmosphere all together? We well, probably the same history, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. What, what, what's so great about LSU? Both of you tell I would us. say Louisiana is different already. Um, I feel like they have a, a big a positive energy, and yeah. they're real big on their sports. Um, their fans get into it. Yeah. Their students get into it. The kids get into it. Everyone's into it. It's loud. It's rowdy. A lot of good smelling food. Everyone's having a good time. Yeah. Um, a great environment. It's hard to explain. Okay. Like that. You Jack, you'd agree, obviously you yeah, played there. Yeah, just the same thing you would be said. Yeah. And is there a team in the opposite manner? Is there a place where like it's yeah. the worst to travel there? The fans are brutal. Mississippi State just Solely because of the cowbells. Wow. I just don't like the cowbells. cowbells. It's just annoying. They like green cowbells? They like green cowbells the whole game. Oh. First down. Two yard game. game. Everything? Two yard game. Three yard game. Four yard game. Nothing. They're shaking the cowbells. Wow. Ew, that would be annoying. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Kind of like your ears are probably ringing when you go home yeah. after that game. Just each play with your cow- cowbells. Each play. Yeah. So you guys can you guys can really relate on a lot of different things because you're coming from the For same sure. conference and have you guys talked about just all the different things that you're experiencing coming from the SEC and now being here? For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And are there a lot of guys that have transferred from the SEC now that are on the TCU team? Like, are you guys yeah, all a little? Like us two, Trey Sanders, JoJo Oro, yeah. Tommy Blackmire. Um, I think that was it, though, from... Well, that's yeah. yeah. Is there... Just, do you guys feel any sort of, like, new energy in the locker room? Because we've got a lot of new awesome guys. Can you... Is there, like... Can you explain kind of what that atmosphere is like with the newer guys and then with the guys that have been on the team for three or four years? Yeah. Would you, would you say we're more of a younger group team? Or... Yeah, probably since last year they were so good they had one of those guys leave the... Yeah. I would say that from coming in the locker room, I would say the... the I guess the younger guys now, they, I, they, they're excited. They, they showed up. They want to do the same thing that they did last year. Yeah. Is there, like, like, big shoes to fill. Sorry, I did not interrupt you. <laughs> Is there, like, a totem pole of, like, you guys have, like, the 
guys who've been here forever, like you listen to them, like they tell you what's like. Is it like? It's just uh, leadership. Doesn't matter how old you are. Oh, you're yeah, a leader. You're a leader. Okay, so it's not like yeah. I've been here for four years. You just transferred. Like you have to. Okay, that's yes, nice. Whoever steps up and takes that yeah. role on. Love that. That's good. Now, I want to pivot to this is something that I'm always interested about with football guys pregame, superstitions, music, all those different things. Are you guys superstitious in the first place, either of you? Do you have like one wristband you have to wear every game, something like that? Exactly. What are, you know yeah, you not seem- even superstitious, just like, like prayer, okay. like talking to God. I don't know if you call it superstitious or not. But no, but that's something that's a part of your routine. Yeah, yeah. Talking, like praying, talking to God. Just like imagining what you're gonna do before you do it. I love that. Right, right before you're headed out onto the field, yeah. is that something you're doing? And what about you, Jalen? Anything? Um, I would say my necklace. My mom gave it to me when I was 16. It's something that I cherish. And she, we have a my mom, she's like one of my best friends, so we have yeah. a lot of deep talks. So she's my motivation. Yeah, you got that right across your chest. I love that. And what about when pregame music? Is there like a song in the bus? I mean, I know it's silent. Everyone's got their headphones on. You're not mingling. Is there a song that you're each individually listening to that just like gets you ready, or you kind of just have a playlist on and every young boy song? <laughs> every young boy song. Okay, we've got young boy's biggest fan in here. <laughs> what about you? Y-B. I see. I gotta calm down because I can't show. But YB, you my favorite rapper as well. So I wouldn't say any song, but I have a few playlists. You know, in different modes, different moods. If I want to turn up, from serious. Yeah. If I want to get excited, it just depends on the team. Yeah. Because also we've the different athletes we've talked to, it kind of ranges. Like the tennis guys, they meditate before. That yeah. was like something that they talked about. Okay. But then like the volleyball girls, they, they like get, go crazy yeah. in the locker room and all of that stuff. And obviously football is a little bit of a different dynamic pregame. But I was just curious if there's like something specifically you guys are listening to. So it sounds like necklace is your superstition and you like to pray, pray before. That's yeah. part of your ritual. I was telling my roommates that I was interviewing LSU transfer. Are the locker rooms like so nice at LSU? That's like yeah, a really like, yeah, we just have like beds in our locker rooms. Like, what? All our lockers are beds. I've seen that on TikTok. That's crazy. I literally saw that on TikTok. Someone like laid out the bed and all of that stuff. It's, so then what has it been like coming to TCU and seeing our facilities here? I mean, we've got nice facilities here too. What is what has that experience been like? Not having a bed maybe, but yeah. something else. No, the only cool? difference is like at LSU, like we had a, a football facility. That was yeah. like just ours. Yeah, um, so now, and here we share it, but like I think that's kind of a cool perspective because you mingle, you intermingle with yeah. all the different athletes. Yeah, and get to know other people. Yeah. I like that too, and I think that's a part of why it's like the small school community feel mm-hmm. is because you're. It's not just with the students, but even the athletes is a small mm-hmm. group of people getting to know each other. All right, now kind of an ending segment that we do every week. We call it the hot seat. We're gonna ask you guys like six or seven questions, just whatever's the first answer that comes to your mind. If you can't think of it, that's okay, but we'll kind of run through them. Each of you can answer individually. There's one that we don't have on here that I want to start with. We asked Bud and them about it. Their answer was like Max Duggan. I think that's who their answer was. But is there someone in your phone contacts right now that's like famous, a celebrity? Who is it? Like, could you call them? If you picked up the phone right now, would they answer? Who would it be? City Lamb, Colin Murray. I'm a lot in the field, dudes. Ooh, there you go. That's right. That's pretty cool. Lunch. Valerie, okay. Um, I, I wouldn't say I could call him and he would answer, but I have Tom Brady's number. Whoa! Whoa. 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 Name Whoa. drop. That's pretty cool. It's Tom just, Brady. Yeah, it was kind of low-key on accident, but... How you got his number? That's okay. Yeah. Now you have it. So yeah. maybe one day you'll run down, run into him down the line, and then you'll be like, oh, I have your phone number. Like, you should, you should text we him. Should, we should call, yeah. Just text him out of blue. Who cares? <gasps> All right. Um, okay, I think yeah, I have a start? good guess, but Spotify Wrapped Artist, you guys have Spotify or Apple? Apple. 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 Okay, who is, like, your number one artist? Yep. Best? Yeah, I could have yeah. guessed. That was a guess. Same. Same. Young boy was yours? Yeah. Okay, love it. You guys have the same. You're like twins. Okay, how about this one? This is a new one we haven't asked. What's your favorite cereal? Fruit I loops. know Emma came up with this. Fruit Loops. Fruit loops. What about you, Jim? Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles. Okay, so you guys, yeah, yeah, fruity cereal. Yeah. Uh, Cocoa Puffs? Cocoa Puffs, yeah. Reese's Puffs. Okay, that's good. Hello, Reese's Puffs, those are good. What about Lucky Charms? Yeah. Maybe okay, marshmallows. Maybe they like oh, cereal. Marshmallows. I know. They, they need to make a yeah, marshmallow yeah. cereal. Yeah, yeah. I would so yeah, eat this. Yes. Okay. Next one we have. Should we ask them the biggest ick? Yeah. What's your biggest ick? Do you guys know what, what that means? Is? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jack's like, I have a lot on my mind. <laughs> he goes, yeah. 
In what in what way? It could just be uh, like for any person. Like she doesn't have to be girl or guy. What was it? Smacking. Like your gum. Yeah. That's, okay. that's interesting. A, I don't know yeah. if this is personal, but I don't like dry lips. Dry lips. Yes. Oh, okay. That's a good one, too. Like, use your chapstick. Yeah, just, yeah, you know, the dry lips. Hygiene. Yeah, okay. there you go. Yeah, I get you, I get you. I don't know. <laughs> now, is there anything, if you guys could go back and tell your freshman self something, what would it be? In high school or college? In college. Don't change being you. Always stay true to yourself and, and be you. Don't change for, for anybody. Love that. I would probably say, um, I had a, I got a quote on my Instagram, one of my pictures, it's, um, what is it, uh, can you hear me now? I, I can't remember right now, um, can I pull it up? Yeah, he's gonna pull, pull he's pulling up a quote on his Instagram I'm of sorry. something that he would maybe tell his freshman year self. Yeah, I stick to this thing about his day, it's kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a, All right. a nice little bit too. Loading, loading. Uh, Answer. What's my Insert Instagram. Here it is. Never had a dream. Can't let a little man down. Okay. So I say that because when I got to college, and I feel like I can talk for a lot of people. Yeah. I feel like when you get there, sometimes you feel like you made it, and you start to slack on the things and don't. You stop working as hard as you did when you were younger to get to where you got. For sure. In high school, I, I, I would say I was probably the hardest working. And sometimes. I feel like I do slack, and I need to remind myself of that. You know, you're doing this for the younger you. How you were when you were younger. You know, you had a big dream. And you're, you're not there yet. You are here, but you're not there yet. So, yeah. right there. I love that. And now it's on your Instagram all the time, so it can remind you every yeah. day. Yeah. All right, Emma, you want to ask the final question of today? Okay. I don't, I still don't have an opinion on this. I know. I don't either. It's but so everyone nice. always has a, a hot take. Pineapple on pizza? No. Yes or no? No. 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 Okay. So you guys have tried it. I, I can't either, remember. Though. I can't remember if the other football guys were hard nose. I think I it think was, Bud was no. Yeah, I think Bud, Bud was, was like no. no. Maybe Namdi was yes. But we we get a range. Some people are really like all about the pineapple on pizza, and oh. some aren't. We have to get one on here. Yeah, I think our pizza. final show we'll have a, a pineapple pizza, and we'll do a taste test and see how we feel yeah. about it. Well, you guys, it was so great to be yes, joined by you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming on our show. We're so happy you're officially TCU Hornets here on campus, and we're so excited for next season looking forward to seeing you both play so thank you so much for stopping by the players club just want to remind everyone watching that we're here every thursday at 6 p.m live from john's grill you can catch it online at frogstay.com as well as our youtube channel and see all of our content on instagram and twitter at frogs today again my name is olivia lee and i'm emma and we will see you next week at six bye, bye. guys thank you.